But the way in to this very broad literature might not be just signing up to everything you can, because that sounds kind of a little bit scary. Huge amounts of material. Rather, what I'd recommend is take something and really run with it. So maybe you're interested in private sector development. Maybe you're interested in debt issues. That's one of the ways I got into to, to development. And learn everything you can about that one issue. Um, then you'll be able to relate. So in the second year, um, you're currently doing macro. If you were very into debt, what you could do is you could take those lessons from macro and you can apply them to debt. So you can say, you know, what allowed debt to balloon as it did in many developing countries? Um, what was its impact on, on the economy as a whole? So it allows you to kind of iterate between your interest in development and the macro that you're learning right now. So really get an interest in something, rather than just say, well, I, I just want to know everything about development there is, because that's huge and you'll never make it. And if you try and go for debt, you'll get breadth. So taking the debt example, debt is going to teach you about public financial management, it's going to talk to you about public expenditure and the impacts on, on school, you know, school kids who uh, no longer have their fees paid for them. It's going to teach you about aid. Whereas if you try and go for breadth, it won't give you the depth. You won't understand the specifics of, okay, so debt's bad. I don't really know why that affects public expenditure management. I don't, don't have an understanding of that. So my recommendation is just grab something and run with it. Now, what, what you choose actually doesn't matter because once you get the skills from going deep in one thing, you'll make it easier to go to another subject and get really deep into that as well. So this kind of goes on to um, your future. Um, we're going to talk about experience in a second. But those two things, getting the best marks you can, knowing economics, and getting a broad uh, understanding of the, the, the development literature, allows you to do two things. Firstly is, whenever you meet anyone, you are networking. Whenever you see your parent's friend who works at uh, um, a mining company, and you impress him with your knowledge of Botswana's mining industry. That is a networking opportunity. That's one of your ways in. So by having this, this knowledge, by being a good economist, and by having the broad knowledge around it, you can go and impress people, you can discuss with people. I was remember, so I, I used to get the Hindu daily newspaper. And I was, so I knew a lot about what was going, going on in India. And I was on a flight, and uh, the Indian professor sat next to me. So he said, oh, you're from India, OK. And I then talked to him about a very specific article from the day before. And he was like, wait, wait a second. How on earth do you know about that? You live in London. I said, why? And I get the Hindu, and this is my interest, and this is my experience in India. So you can do exactly the same thing and open up opportunities to yourself just by having that knowledge base. And the second thing it does is it means you can go into interviews and you can talk about something. So when they say, okay, you've said here that you're interested in debt, can you tell me what, can you evaluate Nigeria's debt relief for me? And if you can talk in a, a rigorous or you can talk in a structured way about that, that's really going to impress them. Uh, and it's going to enable you to get through the interviews you're going to have in, in the coming years. And this isn't just interviews for jobs, this is for internships, this is for the fellowships. Um, just try and be uh, able to have those conversations. But knowledge is only one part of development. You do need this. There's this horrible cycle in development, which is in some other sectors, which is you need to have experience to get a job. And to get a job, you need experience. Sorry. You need experience to get a job, and the way to get experience is through a job. And that's kind of, I think, one of the things people always want to know. How do I break this cycle? So let me give some examples. Um, I broke it through uh, volunteering. So I, I basically I volunteered. Um, I went to, to India for a gap year. Um, I then stayed engaged with India and, and spent a few times. Um, and that got me a, a paid internship, and then a paid internship, that kind of experience got me then onto the ladder. And then you kind of so volunteering is one way in. Um, 
And I think it's it's a very good way because then you can show real initiative and you can go out to somewhere very specific that plays to that deep interest I was telling you about. Um, you can, of course, volunteer at home. I, I, I worked with Action for Southern Africa for a little while, uh, for one summer. Um, and that gives you a perspective on, for me, for Southern, Southern Africa, it gives you a perspective on the developing world without having to move. And you can do that whilst you're at <coughs> university, either during the summer or while you're actually doing your courses. Um, my recommendation is during your course time, focus as much as you can on getting the best grades possible. Um, but if you can do extracurricular activities outside that, that's great. You are trying to learn skills, so volunteering will at least allow you to start learning some of those skills. It's all very well to say, I want to be a development worker, a development economist, but you've got to make sure that you've got the skills to actually go out and achieve that. If someone says, well, I want, look, I want you to manage the scale up of a large um, uh, microfinance, uh, microfinance system in, in Rajasthan, can you do that? Well, you better make sure that you've had enough experiences, even at this low scale, even if they're just at UCL, to make sure you can manage transitions and projects and you can communicate with other people. So do go out and try and get some extracurricular experience, even if it's just with some of the societies here or something in London. So volunteering is one way to do all that. A kind of lower scale volunteering is traveling. And when you do apply for, for example, the ODI Fellowship, which I'll talk about in a minute, it will look better if you if you have had some time you know, traveling in the developing world. But it also allows you to take all this theoretical knowledge that you've got. And if you're from a developing country, this it's it's very impressive to see that you've gone elsewhere. So if you have Indian uh, or South Asian experience, to say you've also been to West Africa shows that breadth immediately. Um, and if you haven't, going there allows you to apply the knowledge, this theoretical knowledge, this whole idea of, well, look, credit markets just don't work as well. Okay. It's nice to, to put on paper and you can solve you know, a few equations. But what does that mean in real life? You know, what does it mean that there's risk pooling in a village? Go and actually experience that and you'll be a much better development economist for it. But do make it worthwhile. Do try and actually do something there. So even if it's just um, a research project or an essay, um, there's an essay competition here at UCL every year. Um, try and make the most out of your experience. Some people have worked for um, travel companies and blog about what they're doing. You know, that's the, at the minimum, write about what you're doing. Um, but if you can, try and engage with some of the development institutions that, that you're going to be to looking at. 